Good evening. Yeah, Mark asked me to speak a bit about the Dojo Giga Earth project. So we'll do that and I'll have maybe five minutes I can ask, I can answer questions if you'd like. Uh, but the first thing I'd like to do is thank someone who was a very big help in making this Taikai a success. And I think this person is the only person here who was invited by Hatsumi Sensei. So I'd like your help in thanking not Nagato Sensei, but his wife, Mamiko Nagato, if you could give her a, a hand. I'd like to tell you a story. It begins at night at Kuramayama under a full moon. Our hero is outnumbered against four Karasu Tengu. He defeats one while others approach and the Mao Dai Sojo observes. This is Hatsumi Sensei's painting of Minamoto no Yoshitsune, which we published in the book Masaki Hatsumi, Dojo Giga, Heaven. In this painting, Yoshitsune is just a boy, not yet 16 years old. After his father and two elder brothers were killed in the Heiji Rebellion, he fled the capital with his mother. From about the age of 10, he lived for five years at Kuramadera, where he was cared for by monks. And then for another six years, the Fujiwara clan protected him in Hiraizumi, in the northern province of Mutsu. But in 1180, Yoshitsune reunited with his clan, led by his half-brother, Minamoto no Yoritomo, under their white banner, to oppose the Heike Red in the Genpei War. Four years later, at Ichinotani, the Heike were defending their fort against waves of Genji attacks from the east when suddenly a war cry echoed in Hiodori Ravine from the north behind them. Those steep rocky cliffs were thought impassable on horseback and yet inconceivably Yoshitsune's mounted troops were there burning the fort. The Heike deserted their camp and rushed for the coast to the south. Desperate soldiers overcrowded the first of their boats. Three of these capsized and sank after rowing just a few hundred yards from shore. Seeing this, officers decided to board next. To prevent their own boats from sinking, they abandoned their subordinates and cut away those who clung to the sides. If we were to paint this nightmare, it might resemble the raft of the Medusa by Theodore Jericho. Maimed Heike soldiers waist deep in bloody surf, pleading as their commanders departed in the final boats. The Heike fleet escaped south, eventually settling at Yashima on the island of Shikoku. Here they guarded against naval attacks, but in March of 1185, Yoshitsune crossed from Honshu at night, miraculously sped and camouflaged by a vicious gale with just five of the Genji's 200 boats and about 150 men, including cavalry. Yoshitsune's troops quickly penetrated the island and, as they approached the Heike stronghold, they learned from locals that the enemy had spread garrisons along the entire coast, leaving defenses at Yashima slim, perhaps only 1,000 horsemen. Yoshitsune saw his opportunity and set multiple fires. Seeing the smoke, Taira no Munemori assumed a massive Genji attack was coming by land. 
The Heike had expected a naval assault, but not this. If they were flanked again, this time by land and sea, all would be lost. They rushed aboard their boats and began to row as Yoshitsune's cavalrymen burst onto the beach under streaming white banners and charged in groups of ten or less to obscure how few they actually were. By the time the Heike realized Yoshitsune's attack was a ruse, it was too late. They had lost their defensive position at Yashima and now had no choice but to flee further south. Following the defeat of the Heike, Yoshitsune's half-brother, Minamoto no Yoritomo, became the first shogun. But relations between them soon began to crack. Yoshitsune returned north to Hiraizumi Mutsu and the protection of the Fujiwara clan. But eventually, Fujiwara no Yasuhira yielded to pressure from Yoritomo. Yasuhira led, a, led 500 mounted troops against Yoshitsune and his retainers, including Saito Musashibo Benke. Yoshitsune committed seppuku within his residence as Benke guarded the bridge to the main gate. Yasuhira's men attacked his position, but Benke cut down so many of them with such ferocity that they decided to abandon direct combat and fire on him from the opposite side of the bridge instead. They shot him with more than enough arrows to, cut any, to kill any man, but to their astonishment, Benke still stood. So they remained on their side, intimidated. When they eventually dared to cross the bridge again, to see for themselves, Benke fell to the ground. He had died on his feet. This is Hatsumi Sensei's painting of the epic standoff. It's in our second Dojo Giga book, Masaki Hatsumi Dojo Giga, Earth. On the earth where Benke would fall, Soke wrote, Om, meaning obligation, Chuai, which is loyalty, Chi Dharma for bloody saint, and Benke. When the treasured poet Matsuo Basho visited the ruins of Koromogawa no Tachi, where Yoshitsune and Benke had died 500 years earlier, he composed the haiku written in this painting. Summer grasses are all that remain of soldiers' ruined dreams. Heaven's theme is martial virtue, military force used properly, namely to create civilization and maintain peace. Earth's theme is bono, afflictions understood in Buddhism to be rooted in misconceptions and the cause of suffering. Heaven is about how things could be. Earth is about how things are because we ignore heaven's lessons. Sensei's paintings in Earth show the cause of suffering and invite us to improve. I'd like to finish with two quotations from Hatsumi Sensei's essay, Dream, which appears in Earth. Two thousand years of history, like a dream within a fleeting vision of the void of heaven. Within the dream, a conversion of evil to good. And my paintings are an expression of this dream, my self's dreamt images. As Takamatsu Sensei said, people doing and not doing Budo are the same. Through Earth, anyone could discover ways to transform themselves if they'd look, and if they would, I think that would be good. And what I was just reading now was just a few passages that really they tie together Yoshitsune and uh, Benke. 
many of the stories that are describing the paintings are from the tale of the Heike, and the Dojo Giga book has references to that work. Um, so to get the full picture, you'd want to read the sources. But uh, I was reading just now some passages from the upcoming book. Yeah. And without those, I know it's hard to follow what's happening in Sensei's paintings. So uh, they kind of, they belong together. And that was kind of the, the point of putting them together into a book. And writing it in both English and Japanese. Because if it's only Japanese, it's hard for a lot of readers. Well, I will be around. You can certainly ask me questions if you can catch me. Here's a little more information if you'd like to order the book. Thank you very much.